Welcome everyone to the 11th day of Thought Miss. I am producer Tim. As always, with me is Drexel. Now Drexel, you brought in a new story, never told before, for the 11th day of Thought Miss. That's right, never told before. Uh, we've got uh, a little, a great tale that uh, has a great date also. Uh, I got a buffer tale, so it's actually going to be a two for one for the 11th day. And then we'll get on, of course, with uh, the 10th day. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be some fun stuff, man. We're counting down, right? December 25th is the Thad story and uh, the anticipation is growing. Oh, man, it's <laughs> you know, I think I've, I've literally blue balled people for like well, almost two years, man. I'm, I'm a horrible person. Let's keep blue balling them for another two weeks then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got for us on the 11th day of Thoughtmas? All right, you know, uh, just to let you guys know, I am going to go ahead and uh, I was just telling uh, Tim, I'm going to go get the, uh, the the jingle bells, you know, the Thoughtmas bells. And I'm going to jingle them and just, you know, ho, ho, ho. And let these guys know what kind of, uh, what kind of tales we got for you guys. And you know what? The first one actually deserves a buffer because... What I'm about to tell you guys deserves a buffer for this reason. It's going to show a thread that's very common that you're going to see yet again when we get to uh, the 11th day. So without further ado, this is actually a uh, thoughtless tale from my old road dog, the, uh, the war starter, the king of Antigua. So when I first got into the life, uh, you know, you always like to pair up with people that you know you're, you're who are cool, who are reliable, and you know who can help blow backs out the way you blow backs out, right? That's the goal uh, for dudes and for females. You look for you know super freaks. Of course, you know they're going to end up being crazy and get clingy and possessive and whatever. But you know that's why you know the chicks become interchangeable. The dudes you usually like to find one or two that who are solid, and if you're lucky, you can find a few more. But usually the guys kind of come and go. But you usually have your your main crew. So. The, the first thing that ends up happening is this took place, this would have been around uh, 2007, right? So way back in 2007, uh, I'm talking to my dude. Uh, we did, did a little meet. This is when I was with my, uh, my, my ex-girlfriend, right? So do a little meet with this, this couple. They're an older couple, right? And I want to say at that point, they would have been, I want to say like late, late 40s maybe mid to late 40s maybe something like that maybe early 50s for the guy and it, it didn't work out as well as you wanted to this is literally a meeting in a parking lot like literally just like, like a just a quick meet see if everything's cool and then you know proceed as follows right you know you go into a bar or whatever to talk so uh, my girl was not feeling it because the the dude uh looked like her dad that was her words right and, and to be fair he did look a bit like her dad so I, I can't even be mad at her so i get it and the reason why this this story is so important is because this is going to give you guys some insight into something that is uh, it's a bit troubling when you really think about it because what ends up happening in the lifestyle is a lot of these couples the man is doing a lot of the talking Here's what the rules are. Here's what she's into and not into. She doesn't like this. We don't do the kissing on the lips. They have all these rules and regulations and all this stuff. So when you're on the other side of that, you're thinking, you're taking everything at face value. Oh, okay, she doesn't like this. She doesn't like that. Okay, I, I get it. Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> Gentlemen, take it from me. If a man ever speaks, for a woman and they are a couple whatever he says she's not into news flash she is into you see what i'm saying okay i got a quick question then go ahead does the man know that she's into it but he disapproves of it and then tries to cock block everyone else from doing it, absolutely it? that's 100 what's going on so so a lot of these lifestyle couples uh, most of them are trying to patch up their relationship or disguise the problems in the relationship because a lot of them are not healthy relationships um, in, in, when they're not in the lifestyle, right? So they try to use it as a crutch. So what ends up happening is a lot of these dudes try to place these, these restrictions on the woman's uh, sexuality and pleasure. So like I said, now, now you do see it from women also. Like there are women out there who, 
you know, they, they do like the hot wife lifestyle, which means she's out there playing, but he's basically a cuck and doesn't doesn't do anything other than watch, right? Or she'll say, like, oh, we're open, but mainly it's me. But yeah, he can't kiss other girls or he can't do this. What? <laughs> but, but, but she can do anything, right? She can go get, get trains ran on her and all that. So that's one of the things you end up seeing. So going back to 2007, we're in the parking lot and we meet and it doesn't go so well. So I said, hey, you know, it is what it is. I told I told my man, the king of Antigua, I said, Yo, man, it didn't work out, but big deal. You know, holler at me later. We'll figure something out, man, right? You know, there's there's always, you know, <laughs> there's always new chicks to smash, right? So he says, cool, no big deal. And one of the things that was weird was that, I, if, if I recall, they were still, like, in the parking lot, kind of, like, just kind of chatting while I was leaving. So I ended up getting this story after the fact. And he goes, oh, but you won't even believe what happened. And I said, well, well what happened? He said, yo, do you remember when the dude and, uh, you know, we'll call him M. Do you remember when M was saying that A, that's the, the, we'll call the woman A. Do you remember when M was saying that A, you know, she doesn't do anal. She has to do X, Y, and Z. She's not into this. I said, yeah. You guys won't believe this bullshit. So the same dude, M, who said that his wife, that was his wife, didn't do all these things. He said, oh, well, why don't you play with her in the van? Yes, in the van, bro. Like like, like Scooby-Doo mystery van. You play with her in the van while I go get some some uh, drinks, right? I, think, I believe he was going to get beers or something from a liquor store. And some snacks. So, yeah, right? Some, I don't know if he got snacks, but I did know he said something about liquor. But well, He's a terrible cuck if he didn't bring snacks. Like, come on. Yeah, right? <laughs> you you got to bring something. And my dude didn't drink. So, you know, I didn't drink. He didn't drink. So he, he's just going to, I mean, I don't really drink. But I mean, if you want to go get something for her, so be it, right? This is what's very telling. He tells me the moment this dude left, he, my guy, the, the, the war starter, King of Antigua, he gets up in the van with her and he starts doing what he said he was allowed to do, right? What he was told he was allowed to do, correct? Like, oh, okay, well, she's not, you know, I can't kiss. I can't do this. And he said, this bra was, I kid you not. She rolled her eyes. Like, fuck that shit. Bareback? Yes. Anal? Yes. You, uh, come in her mouth? Yes. Anything, any, every single thing that M said that was a no-go was 100% go with Miss A. And so he said he was just kind of looking like, wait, wait a minute. Because remember this, I think this might have been the first time he ever encountered that. He's like, wait a minute. That didn't make any sense. I mean, you, you, this is literally the exact opposite of what you gave me, right? In terms of the information. And I wanted to, to use that to preface what the official 11th day of Thotmas is. And this story actually has an, a date. Because as I look through my pictures, I have an actual date on this one. The date is January 20th, 2008. And this picture is actually dated at 2 a.m. I can't make this up. And uh, <laughs> there's a lot of elements, guys. So uh, if you guys are uh, you're on the road or something or you're sitting at home chilling, man, gra grab some snacks, kick back, drink a beer, and just listen to this bullshit. So <sighs> here's the present. 11th day of thoughtness. So this takes place at the Cambria Suites in Minneapolis. Actually, like Minneapolis slash Bloomington, I believe. But technically, that's Bloomington, not far from the Law of America. I believe it's been converted now to a Spring Hill Suites, which is, I think, I can't remember who owns that. If it's like Marriott or something. And this is what's wild. You guys have to understand how this whole thing came about. So here we are. This is January. And I do remember this very clearly. The, uh, the NFL playoffs was going on. Right. This is this is the January 20th. So that would have been the, the, the championship game. And then the Super Bowl is uh, after that. Right. So, so you have the Super Bowl. Uh, and that, if I recall, this was the same weekend that Kobe Bryant scored 81 points, if, if my memory serves right. And this the, the, all of this was prompted because, as you guys may or may not know, most play times are prompted by new playmates. If, you, if there's someone you already know, then you just communicate with them directly and say, oh, hey, hey you want a threesome? Hey, well, you know, me and this guy are available. Me and this girl are available. That's usually how that works. But when it comes to larger volume play times, we used to have to start renting adjoining suites and things like of that nature. 
usually someone is prompting that. It's it's a new face that prompts these things. So what, what ended up happening is there was a couple out of Kansas City. And this couple came and contacted me. And they said, oh, hey, you know, you know, you guys are in the Minneapolis area. You know, we, we're coming there and we're, you know, we're looking to have some fun. You know, my wife, it's always, you know, it's always the dude talking. Oh, the, the wife wants to do X, Y, and Z. We can have gangbang. It's all the same old shit. Gangbang slash orgy kind of stuff. Because she's bi. And I said, okay, well, you know, give me kind of a rundown. What are you into? What are you not into? So she lists like her her rules, right? Her, her uh, uh, God, the word eludes me. Um Basically, what, yeah, limitations, what her limitations are, right? So, she, you know, she's like, okay, I'm into this, and that, you know, another three hole slut. It is what it is. She might have been a two hole slut. I can't remember. So, she, she gives us her, her little story, and I said, okay, cool. And I will never forget this, y'all. I was watching the game. If I recall, it was the AFC championship game that year. And as I'm watching the game, I get the call from her, and I was annoyed. That she called because it was a very it was a very close game. I was annoyed that she called. So so when I picked up, I wasn't all like, "Oh hey, how you doing?" You know, I was kind of like, yeah, "Hello, shit!" Like, like you know, this is a, so, you know for for those of you who who aren't sports fans, I was a big sports fan back then. The NFC and AFC championship games are a big deal because of course the winners go to the Super Bowl. So to interrupt that is you know bad manners if you ask me. Yeah, like I'm a big football fan myself. If you call me during the AFC Championship game, especially when my team is playing, you'll get a what? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're very curt, right? You're, you're, you're like borderline rude because you're kind of like, you, did you really call me? Like, unless it's halftime or like, you know, like if it's a crazy play and it's like, you know, like a fellow sports fan, like, yo, did you see that shit? Oh, like Edelman's catch in a, against the Falcons? Yeah, Correct. some text messages went out after that. Yeah, yeah, Julio Jones in the Super Bowl when they when Atlanta blew the lead or the helmet catch, like just just unless it's a, a fellow sports fan saying, "Did you see that?" You know, like I said, whether it be a text or phone call. Other than that, you don't really want people calling you or te- text is fine, but you just don't want people calling you. So she calls, and like I said, I, I will admit I was not the the most pleasant because of course she interrupted my game. But I was still, you know, got the necessary information out. So I said, hey, look, uh, you know, this is, you know, for those of you guys who may not know, this is how this works. When a, when a new playmate enters the picture and they are, you do a meet and greet. So a meet and greet is what you do when you go to a public venue, usually like a bar slash restaurant. And you have sent pictures of the participants ahead of time. So the person can then say yay or nay. So everyone gets to know what the other people look like. So if you try to catfish somebody, it's not going to work because at a meet and greet, if you try to show up too old or too fat or too whatever, the person can be like, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, I will join with these people, but not you. So we, we, we briefly talk and I explained where the meet and greet was going to be. And I said, hey, this is where the meet and greet is going to be. And then after the meet and greet, we're going to the, uh, the playhouse, right, which is, which is the Cambria Suites. <laughs> and I will never forget this, man. You guys got to hear this bullshit. We get to the meet and greet, and if I recall, I think basically everybody showed up, right? The couple, uh, one of my homegirls, platonic homegirl showed up. She showed up, uh, a couple, you know, there was a couple other people, and then uh, there was another couple. And one of the things that was wild was the couple who prompted all of this, if I recall, this was like a 17, I want to say 17-person playtime. If, if I would have had everyone there, that would have been 17 people. The, the, the couple from Kansas City who prompted this was a, was a no-call, no-show. So, so I'm at the meet and greet like, uh, where are they? But, but I'm like, well, hey, we still got a, you know, a, a gang of people, right? No big deal. The show must go on. While we're at the meet and greet, one of the dudes who wanted in brought one of his bros. He was a firefighter. And later on, before we left to go to the playhouse, which is the hotel, the uh, the couple, uh, she, the the female half pulled me to the side like, "Yo, these dudes were trying to get me to go with them solo," and I'm like, "Oh, you thought that was gonna work?" And she said, "No." So they ended up going home with blue balls. It is what it is, right? And every, every you know, we, we end up working out everything. It's okay, guys. Well, here's the location where we're going. The room is booked. It's at joining uh, joining suites. Let's go. So everybody hops in their respective car. We drive off to Cambria Suites. We arrive that fateful night of January uh, 20th, 2008. And 
this this was interesting. I was younger and dumber back then. Obviously, this was you know twelve years ago, and there was a guy I worked with who had a kind of like a, you know he has a more of like that 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 Rico Suave kind of um, uh, persona, right? And this dude talked that big willy shit, right? Oh, I'm so suave. I'm so good with the ladies and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, cool. And he said he wanted in because I let him know. I said, look, man, I'm going to need some some extra some extra dicks on deck, right? You know what I'm saying? You need that DOD. Yeah, you need some bench dicks ready to go. Coach, put me in, coach. Yeah, put me in. Because here's the thing. When you do these kinds of things, you have to assume that X amount of people won't show up. So like, if, if someone said, I want to do a gangbang and I want four guys, you should have – six, seven, or eight who are saying, yes, I'm in. So that way, if, if you know two or three backs out or can't come or whatever happens, right, They're, they couldn't get a sitter, you're like, hey, we're still good. You, you never have the amount that you that you are being requested of. You always have more, similar to a, a, a pro football roster, right? That's why you have a practice squad and everything. Like You have a 53-man roster, but you still have more guys on reserve and guys who can play multiple positions, right? So – this dude was sitting there, you know, gassing himself up. And I said, okay, so I gave him a shot, right? Everyone gets a tryout if 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 I if you pass the initial test. So I talked to him and I talked to another dude that I had known for years. And he said he was going to bring uh, one of his bros, right? And I said, cool, no big deal. Guys, we are in the Cambria Suites. And my girl at the time saw this dude's dick. I'm not joking. The shit looked like, like he talked like he had a bratwurst. He pulled out a goddamn cocktail weenie. It was a gherkin. Okay, compare it to, have you seen the Ethan Ralph sex tape? He was smaller than Ethan Ralph. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he's black. He, he disrespected the entire black race. <laughs> yeah, you don't no. blame him. We disowned him. No, he, he must have not voted for Biden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he definitely didn't vote Biden. And this, this wild shit happens, man. So... I kid you guys not. I will never forget this. So I was on pick duty, right? And I'm like, oh, hey, you know, I'm just kicking back, taking pictures, you know, because it's kind of like in the A-team, you know what I'm saying? I believe it was Murdoch was his name, right? He's like, you know, I love it when a plan comes together or whatever. That was like his famous line. I love seeing a a good playtime come together and be successful. So I'm like, hey, I'm just kind of kicking back, taking pictures. Everything's good. When I saw this bullshit penis, I, remember, this is my, my girl. I'm dating this girl. I will never forget the look on her face. I'm thinking, oh, shit. You, you know, when you see something, you go, oh, shit. You just, you know, you're like, I'm about to get my asshole ripped after this. I know she's going to rip me a new one. Because you, you you already know, like, yep, she's going to be disappointed and pissed off. And she had every right to be, right? And, uh, you know, just to jump ahead to, to let you guys know something that changed. And this is a, a policy I changed after this day, which is January 20, 2008. I changed my policy so that when guys try to come up to me saying, yo, can I get in? I always tell them, a female has to refer you. You don't tell me how big you are. She does. You don't tell me how good your skills are. She does. You don't tell me how good your oral skills are. She does. See? Policy change. But back to brass tacks. So here we are. And the, the this is some wild shit. There, the when we're sitting there, I'm trying to give you guys like a layout of the room. It's an adjoining suite, and there's a there's a love seat with like an island chair, and then uh, uh, in front of that island chair would have been a, if I recall, it was like a a flat screen TV, and then there was like a microwave and stuff in there because you were in suites. You see what I'm saying? So we're in suites that have beds and suites, right? So and then there's an adjoining room. You go in there, and then there's another uh, another bedroom, and I will never forget this. The uh, the husband wife couple who was also there, um, P and J. J is the dude. P is the female. J. The only thing he did was like you know took an occasional picture of his wife getting smashed, right? And you know, uh, <laughs> war started. The king of Antigua was with me, so he was in there doing P, right? And here's what's wild, guys. Every he told me this after the like after the night was over, um, he said every time he came in there to like take pictures and be creepy, 
she had to like basically pretend that she was not enjoying herself and blah 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 and all you know you know make sure you make it look like the condom is still on blah 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 right but this the moment he left back out of the room all right check the condom off do this to me choke me do this basically give her the sex that she wants i'm thinking damn these bitches are just and here's the thing sometimes it's not even the females man it's these dudes who are just bitch made because they're insecure that's why they try to restrict the the pleasure and sexual access of the female but that's neither here nor there this dude with all of his weird shit remember guys other people are fucking there's other you know girls out here in 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 g-strings and shit and he ain't touching nothing he's not only thing he's doing is taking pictures of her occasionally taking dick fair enough but this is where the story gets weird there comes a point where you know like i told you guys i was on pick duty and I'm sitting on this uh, th- this this love seat, right? I'm sitting on the love seat, and all this other stuff is going on around me. I can't make this bullshit up. I'm sitting there. He is sitting next to me on a love seat. You guys know I have very broad shoulders, and he's a broad shoulder dude too. He looks like the kind of guy that maybe like wrestled or played football. And he's like, oh yeah, I, you know. And he's kind of like looking. in my this was funny. It was my girl who said, I really want to see her suck your dick. And I mean, you know me, I'm a guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to pass down any female who's attractive, <laughs> suck the dick. So she gets on the D. I kid you guys not, man. This man has not done anything. Ass is everywhere. Chicks getting plowed. He ain't doing nothing but taking pics. So now he's sitting next to me. And I kid you guys not. The moment his P's wife, I mean, as I'm saying, uh, Jay's wife P unbuckled my pants while my, my girl, so my girl was sitting there. She's sitting on that little island chair that I told you guys about directly across from us. So she's rubbing her stuff, like staring intently. She unbuckles my pants, pulls out the D. This dude who I'm literally rubbing shoulders with because we got bra shoulders on a love seat, he's staring at me and he all of a sudden, reaches in his pants and starts jerking bro starts jerking off so here's me like trying to get in my zone right like like oh yeah let me go ahead and get this 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 dick suck yeah now you need a divider bro he it, it, dude i just went limp so so this dude is literally on my shoulder going so, so that would have been his so, so i'm on the left side of the love seat he's on the right side so but he's jerking with his right hand so his so so you know if you if you're jerking with your right hand your your left side of your body is still moving you see what i'm saying yeah dude I go limp. I'm just like, is this fucking guy serious? I'm like, no, nah, man, nah. He's just like, oh, yeah. Look, (laughs) I've talked about this on on a couple of Nick streams. This is not to bash white dudes. Don't don't take this the wrong way. Because I'm sure, you know, we we can go down to Atlanta and you'll you'll see it from the opposite perspective, right? Because that's the black man San Francisco. This was the night that I swore off ever dealing with couples. Because it's always some, it's like, like I said, it's the dudes. So, I, like, like I said, I don't know about what it is about white dudes. And, and, and I got to be honest with you guys, I've talked to too many women in my life, especially when they're um, uh, like Latinas, even a couple of Asians. But it's something about white dudes. They always got to do some weird quasi gay shit. And Dave Chappelle talked about this. In a stand-up, he said, when black dudes get drunk, he's left alone, right? If a, guy, if a black guy gets drunk at a party and he passes out and there's nothing but black people around, ah, oh, yeah, leave him alone, man. He's drunk. But he was like, when you pass out around white dudes, it's always some gay shit. <laughs> Put your balls on his fucking forehead, bro. <laughs> and it's it's some weird shit. I'm just kind of like, you know, and, and, and the fact that you didn't do nothing all night, but yet you pulled out your dick and wanted to jerk off. Only when you saw me getting ready to do it. No, nah, no, nah, we're done. We're done. And here's what's fucked up. As this episode unfolds, and I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, I'm not feeling this. And I remember standing. I remember I stood up, and I'm like, because there's a knock at the door. It's knock at the door. It's the other dude that I told you guys about earlier in the story that I knew who said he was coming with one of his bros. He comes in the room, and the dude literally acted like a damn wild hyena. He comes in like a damn gorilla. Oh, shit. He's like, I'm talking like, he. so he did like a 360. So he's like, like, like okay, imagine doing like like high knees, right? Bup, 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 high knees 
in a 360 motion with his hands going over his head. Like, oh, Someone's a shit. little too excited. A little too. And I'm just, I, I just remember thinking like, you fucking that. So, so I, I'm just getting this. So now I went from like, this is a plan all coming together to there's a little bit too much fuck shit going on, right? Just a little bit too much. So, like, I get it. You could be excited for things, but there's there's a point where you're way too excited for something. Yeah, you're a little overzealous, right? You're just a little overzealous. So, dude was on that bullshit, and I just remember, like, I had to check these dudes, like, yo, man, this is not how you behave. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a lifestyle party, and you you always have, you know, a, a stone face, right? And this should be common to you. Like, like here's the thing: there's, there's an old saying in sports, right? When it comes to you know, you win, you win the championship, you win the Stanley Cup. Act, Act like, like you've, you've been, been here before. there before. Yep. Yeah, I know Act that. Like you've been here before. So, so, so don't, I, don't, don't show up your opponent. Don't act crazy. Just be like, yep, yep, woo, fist pump. Yep, we did it. Yep, we got it. We got the chip. These dudes act like that, man. I'm like, you know what? And it was after this night that I was like, okay, the whole white couple thing done. Couples in general, nope, done. You need a greeter at the door for when someone comes in and makes them sign a rules of etiquette paper. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the way that these dudes act, I'm like, you know what, man? Like, all I could do was get mad, right? Like, you fucking idiot. Because just like I told you guys that, that Dallas story on Nick's show, you had one job. And, and so, so don't think that, you know, I'm going to go easy on these dudes. Show up. Fuck. Fuck. Leave. Leave. That's it. That's it. Like, 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 if that's not the easiest job, and this is the reason why I get so pissed when I think about this shit. You understand? I get pissed because of this. Do you know what I hear from guys all the time, Tim? These girls are out here playing games. These girls ain't doing X, Y, and Z. Me. Yet, when I say, hey, man, why waste time at the club? Why waste time at the bar? You come to a lifestyle party. You have an in at a swing club. You're guaranteed to get what you want anyway, right? Without without all the hassle. You see what I'm saying? Without all the games. And yet you so someone has done all the homework for you. All you have to do is show up. All you have to do is show up. And you fuck that up. It should be easier to participate in one of these lifestyle parties than it is to put yourself out when you're on fire. Oh, right? Absolutely. Are you telling me show up, fuck, leave is harder to do than stop, drop, and roll? Right? And these do the, these guys continually fail. Like, like I have said on numerous occasions, in the modern landscape, I'm going to be honest. The women are on, on our top of their game. We're, we're just all hookup culture. Like I said, I'm not talking about relationships. In terms of hookup culture, it is the women who are on top of their shit more so than the dudes. If someone were to ask me who who's more likely to flake or act weird, I'm going to say it's it's the dudes. Dudes are more likely to do some some fuck shit now. Obviously, we had homegirl who decided to get her ass arrested and thrown in jail. But hey, you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but very in light, like, like, I just want you guys to understand something, though. The reason why this, this is a tale of thoughtness is because I've told you guys, even when they're married, they're always single. They always want to do what they really want to do. Who's the easiest girl to fuck? The married chick. Always. And whether her man is there or not. You see what I'm saying? That's the worst part. Yeah, true. And I want you guys to understand something tonight. Think about both of these linked stories that I told you. Notice her behavior when her man was there. So her man could represent the police, right? It doesn't, if a police officer is near you on the highway, right? You're driving. And a police officer is to your left or to your right or, to, or behind you. You drive differently. Both hands on the wheel, looking forward. You aren't fiddle faddling with nothing. You're not texting. You're... I definitely put my bottle of whiskey back in the glove compartment. <laughs> yeah, right? But, but, but you're, you're a model citizen, right? You don't want to be a model citizen, but you are because the cop is there. That's basically how this stuff works, you guys. I tell no lies. When women are around their man, and, and, and to be fair, look, I got to be fair on this one, though. I got to be fair. We can make it a valid, valid point that the same is true if we, if we flip the, the, the genders, right? A lot of guys act, and you know this is true, Tim. A lot of guys act a certain way around their wife or girlfriend, right? Oh, my relationship is perfect. Oh, yep, yep. oh man, I, I couldn't imagine life without her. 
But as soon as she's gone, yeah, dude, it fucking sucks. Look, look the marriage, the, the the divorce rate has skyrocketed during the pandemic because people can't see their side pieces. Okay, so when these women are out here uh, saying, "You know, this is all yours, Daddy." Yeah, Daddy, there ain't nobody else getting this peace lead. There ain't no one else busting me down but you. Oh yeah, you hit it just right. She's lying. She's lying because when she gets with the guy she really wants to be with. Me, the war started, the king of Antigua, my smash bros. Then she does what she really wants to do, right? Spit in her mouth, spit in her face. So that, uh, so that's our story for the 11th day of thought, miss, huh? That is the story, man. Yeah, so, so that the lesson to take away from that story, both the, the connection of the stories, is that these women are going to give two, two identities with their sexuality. They're going to give you the identity that... Uh, uh, coincides with what, what restrictions you have placed on them and then what they really want to do. And that's what I wanted you guys to take away from, from these, uh, these conjoined stories of how they really like to get down. The moment your back is turned, trust me, guys, they're doing the stuff they really want to do. All that nasty porno shit they say, oh, oh, I think that's disrespectful to women to, for, to get the money shot on the face. No, she just doesn't want it from you. <laughs> Because at the Cambria Suites, it all goes down, man. As soon as you turn your back and you're not taking pictures no more, she wants to do it raw dog. She wants yeah. to do hurry hole. That's how it really goes down, man. Spank me, choke me, and that's what it is, man. And that's the conclusion, you guys. That concludes the 11th day of thought, miss. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow where we'll upload the 10th day of thought, miss. Counting down yeah, to December right. 25th.